What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So uh, this is my oil play from yesterday, yesterday's video on Luke Oil. Gotta change that number from uh, 20 down to, well it was 12 in the after hours. My buddy scooped some around there. Actually got down to like 8. I saw it at 675. I wasn't able to buy though. Um, sure some super elites got it though. It's back up to 17 or whatever now. I'm expecting it to kind of like I'm learning. Like when when you're buying in like a war area, um, yeah. things are getting pretty gnarly. Like the we're 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 uh, we're seeing what governments inevitably do. And this hit me like a ton of bricks this morning. Like I had an epiphany, and I was like, oh my gosh, I get it now. There's this great guy named Gerald Salenti. I love his content. He's uh, he's just a great soul. Like, he's just a great guy. I'd recommend checking him out. But he said, and he's been saying for about a year and a half now, when all else fails, they take you to war. And I'm like, okay, yeah, it kind of makes sense. But it didn't. I didn't realize until this morning when I was watching Luke Oil what was actually going on. When you take the americans or the western world for example a week ago we were talking about the trucker convoy in canada trudeau was at a low point in his career he's locking canadian bank accounts the u.s people are like oh that's kind of weird u.s truckers are like we're going to convoy to dc i do a video on the capitol police getting their cdls and then the news cycle changes and it's like war russia and then it amps, and every day we're on day five, it's just been amping up, amping up, amping up. Now we're talking about nukes, now we're talking about, like, we're talking about how we solve, as the political elites of the U.S., how they would solve all of the domestic woes, the inflation that they caused when they printed excess of 10 trillion currency units in 18 months, the supply shortages and crunches that they caused by complete incompetence and shutting down the global economy for a flu so that the central banks could inflate and that they could use those inflated currency units to buy assets and squeeze normal people, the plebs, out of being able to buy those same assets at the same amount uh, or same rate, rather. Housing went up, fuel went up, cars went up, salaries pretty much stayed stagnant. We saw the division between the email class and the working class. Email class sits on Twitter all day and plebs, wear your mask, wear your mask. Working class is in their truck all day. And we saw, well, there's a big difference when somebody's able to consume nine or ten hours of podcasts a day and sits and thinks on those versus someone that's doing as they're told as an email compliant debt slave. And we saw the division. And the way to fix the division is to take them to war. Big war war a european war and the way that we can mask over what is probably inevitably coming and what i think is inevitably coming is an epic american stock crash not necessarily not necessarily soon though it could happen any time and not necessarily down because it can crash up so what I mean by this is we need a bad man, we need a boogeyman, we need Putin to blame everything on, to take what's remaining of your freedoms, to force the plebs into the pod to eat the bugs. Which is an actual thing by the World Economic Forum. It's a real line. Same with by 2030, you'll own nothing and you'll be happy. It's a real thing. And, uh, and I thought through this and I'm like, this solves all their problems. This literally solves all of their problems. Global war... And a stock crash just going ch -ch 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 down. Well, it's not that stocks were overvalued. Putin, man. Russia, man. Russia, bad, dude. <laughs> like, sanctions, dude. Global food. What's going to happen to global food and supply lines with crisis after crisis? Food goes up. Fuel goes up. Assets go down. Plebs live in the pod, eat the bugs, Agenda 2030. Digital currency rolls in, microchips for passports, because now you can't go anywhere until, you know, you have your annual or seasonal or monthly, whatever is running around. We need to completely track you. It's, um, and I sat back and I thought about it and I'm like, now the, when everything fails, they take you to war line makes total sense. It makes total sense because what Russia is asking for, and I'm not pro any nation state. I am an ANCAP, an anarcho-capitalist. 
meaning I believe in like voluntary exchanges. I don't think that we need to have like this uh, representative government of elites that has a money printer that creates massive distortions all over the globe and causes war and violence and death everywhere they go. I don't think that that's necessary. Uh, but that's the world we live in. And so when all else fails, you take them to war. You can mask the trucker convoy. You can mask all of that. You can take in further censorship. You can take a group of people who are clearly Russian supporters, those truckers and those free-loving, free-loving individuals, and you can clearly get them on a nationalistic argument. Russia, bad. We go war. It's very simple. Stock market crashes because it's overvalued, whether it crashes up or down. What I mean is the currency can crash and the market can crash up. The assets don't necessarily have to drop because they're overvalued. Because we have a, we have a country where we do passive investing. So you get a check from your employer, and part of it goes into your IRA, and you don't even know what you own, but every, mo every week or month, you know, it just continues to pile and there's only so many assets. And ultimately the guys at the top collect it all right before the, the thing goes down and then it goes down and they leave the middle class at higher gas prices, higher home prices, uh, less equities, less wealth. And by the way, you're going to need to be compliant. You know what the best way to do that is probably a digital currency. Oh, well, we can't have crypto. No, we can't have crypto because obviously Russia is getting around the sanctions and they've thrown the T word now on the country. It's a T country. It's now like, you know, Afghanistan or whatever. Now it's like, oh, these guys are Al-Qaeda, you know? Um, so now because capital flows, we have to control those capital flows and we can't control crypto flows. So we need to start heavily regulating it in some form that we've yet to do because we haven't decided that we've had the right crisis to do that. We didn't want it to be seen as an overreach when we regulated crypto at some point in time. And they will, I'm sure. Doesn't mean I won't be buying the crap out of it. It doesn't mean I'll be complying with, uh, with any new rules that they have on top of that as well. I'm gonna continue to live as a free individual. The ways to do that in my mind are defensive moves. Things like owning and actually having possession of real money. That's silver, gold, copper, cryptos. I think what we're seeing now is the capital flow into Bitcoin is interesting coming out of Russia. And that they can essentially identify wallets that may come out of there. And then they can black mark those wallets and track that capital as it flows in and out. I don't think that that stops it. I do think it makes a really strong case for things like Monero and private currencies. I think that's where we're going. And I don't think that you should be fearful of it because there's nothing we can do about it. Like there's like nothing, nothing you or I can do about it. We can make defensive moves, have 90 days, 180 days of food supply. We can grow some of our own stuff. Rice, beans, honey last for a long time. And it will literally give you enough calories if, to avoid craziness. Like the toilet paper runs. You want to avoid that. But when all else fails, they take you to war. And the market, I think, is the next thing. But I think announcing something and then allowing the market to inflate with the currency collapse or deflate with like a, a devaluation of assets, either way accomplishes their goal, which is we want to eliminate the middle class. That's literally my framework on things because they've done nothing to tell me otherwise that they are pro middle class. They're like, they're all about the haves and the have nots. And they really want the have nots so that they're easy to control. And so I think that the best thing that you can take away from this is have a defensive position, meaning like you have your own resources the best that you can, food, water, secure, you know, energy, security, all that type of stuff. And if you can have offensive moves like my Luke Oil play, which they could always take my U.S. trading accounts, it doesn't mean that they can stop me from buying Luke Oil. I just might not be able to buy it through U.S. accounts. There are other ways to do this. But I think that that's the time of history that we're at. And the big, the big thing that I see coming down the pike is when you have all of these negative yielding assets, meaning like government bonds that are paying 2% interest, but the inflation is seven and a half, their numbers. So they're guaranteeing that they're going to take 5% of your purchasing power, although those numbers are probably understated, but they're guaranteeing they're going to take 5% of your purchasing power. So eventually as a fund manager, and we're talking hundreds of billions and into the trillions. I mean, we're talking total asset class about hundred trillion dollars. It's gonna have to flow somewhere. And in my opinion, that's gonna be the metals. That's why in the mornings I sell that stuff. I'm that broker for that stuff or um, cryptos. Think that that's gonna be huge. Commodities, real land and property. Think that that's where all of those negative yielding 
uh, debt instruments are going to go, and then the governments are just going to turn on the money, money printers, hey, currency printers, and they'll just devalue the currencies, which will totally change the standard of living. Uh, but I think the best thing we can do is get in a defensive position and then speculate on this to increase our wealth. Because with where we're going, and I don't think Agenda 2030 is going to really go as planned, but it, it could. But we're moving to a haves and have not society. I'm just advocating that you need to be on the other side of that coin, even if it's buying Exxon, the safe play, or buying Luke all the way down at the bottom, which is the super risky bad Russia play. Uh, but now it's got a P.E. ratio of 1 to 2 this morning. So... Nothing about the company changed. They actually like have more resources this week than they did last week. They announced a big oil well in Mexico. But our political elite are changing the capital flows to where, where that capital flows in or out of Russia or any nations associated with. And the next move here is to break the government's control of capital flows. And I think what you're going to see is crypto-backed equities, meaning tokenized equities that trade on decentralized exchanges that cannot be sanctioned and cannot be controlled this way or that way. So you don't have massive jumps and spikes and huge $100 billion companies that go down to a market cap of $5 billion for a moment in time. I wasn't able to buy it there. The cheapest I've been able to buy it was like $16 billion. But nonetheless, um, I think I understand what Gerald Salenti means by when all else fails, they take you to war. And I think it's really important that we as Kulaks remember and remind and it, try, wasting your effort on those that don't understand is people are driving around with, with masks at this point in time. They're, they're not savable. They're just, they're just things that just ride around our planet until they don't like, it's just, they're, they're not savable things. Uh, but the narrative, the mainstream narrative of Russia bad but they want the exact same agreement that we gave Cuba. That's all they're asking for, is what we got with Cuba. But when they do it, they're terrorists. When we do it, it's policy. When we invade Afghanistan, it's policy and good. When they invade a country, it's bad. I'm anti all war. But um, I think I understand what Jared is getting at. So thank you for your attention. Thank you for the comments below. I will always see you down there. Thank you for the likes. Thank you for sharing these videos with somebody who may need to hear it. And until next video, stay base, and I'll see you in the comments.